I'm building a VR game set in an expansive procedural city where every building can be entered. When I started this project, I had an important decision to make. What would the city's layout look like? The added challenge to answering this question for my project is the fact that every building has to have an interior, so I couldn't go with a highly irregular city grid because that would make it very hard to generate interiors. I tried the most obvious option first, the grid. It makes sense to have a city built on a grid because many real life cities are. But there are two problems with the grid. For a start, all buildings have roughly the same size, which reduces the variety of interiors I can put in them. And I definitely want to have as much variety as I can. And the second, more important problem in my opinion, is that the grid creates vistas that let the player standing on any street see all the way to the end of that street, making the city look kind of empty. There are ways to mitigate that by creating buildings that take up more than one grid cell and hope that they overlap enough to terminate those vistas. But I wanted a more organic solution. So the other day I was looking at a tree map chart and I thought, hmm, that kind of looks like a city grid, especially if I subdivide each rectangle further. So I tried that exact same algorithm to generate the layout of my city and it worked surprisingly well. It solved the problem of vistas and all buildings having the same size while subdividing the space into axis aligned rectangles that can be subdivided further, creating a very cool fractal structure. I decided to use several tiers of subdivision with different types of separators to make the city look more organic. The main city rectangle is split into sectors separated by rivers, which are split into districts separated by wide roads, which are split into blocks with cozy narrow streets between them, and the blocks contain buildings and parks. I used several other patterns to arrange the buildings within a block for more variety, but the main pattern remains the squarified tree map. Even the interiors have a tree map layout, although it's less obvious because you can't see the borders of the rectangles. Another challenge was of course the performance. I knew the city had to be bigger than any PC can not only render, but even generate within a reasonable time, so I'd have to spawn chunks of the city dynamically. That's why I wrote a custom class with fractal-like structure that every object in the city is inherited from. What it does is check the distance to the player at every tick and spawn child objects if the player is within that distance, and if they aren't, a low detail approximate model is spawned instead. Sounds simple, but this led to an entire hierarchy of objects where everything is a child of something else all the way up to the main city object. Managing this hierarchy has been the biggest challenge so far. I had to make sure not too many child objects would spawn at the same time, so there's a queue system to prevent that. I also implemented a pooling system for the child objects to make spawns faster. And I had to make the spawning and the despawning as asynchronous as I could within the limitations of Unreal Engine to prevent stutter. The work is not done yet, and everything in this video is still subject to change. By the way, I am now working on a navigation system for the vehicles and the NPCs, and I keep thinking how much easier this task would be if I went with a simpler grid-like topology. But I guess this is the main challenge of procedural generation, balancing variety with technical feasibility. Stay tuned for more videos on how I created the interiors and the street detail.